Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for letting me come and uh, have the opportunity to talk about something rather important that we're doing with uh, Basic Auth and Exchange Online, something that involves customers, developers, partners, everybody. Um, it's a, a fairly uh, impactful change, and uh, frankly, as much help as we can get uh, from everyone, the better. So I'm Greg Taylor. I'm a, a product manager in M365 Core. I'm focused on exchange and security. And uh, what I want to briefly try and walk through uh, with this audience today is a reminder of hopefully you're aware of what we're doing in Basic Auth and Exchange Online. If not, this will be a, a, a brief summary. Um, how we are telling customers to go find the usage that they have and uh, what they what it means, what they're going to do about it. And then there's a bunch of useful links as well. So I'm going to on through as quickly as I can. Happy to follow up with questions in the chat or wherever. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the, the real lowdown. So beginning October 1st, 2022, we are going to start to turn off basic auth for a number of protocols, for eight different protocols. I'm going to highlight a few key words because some of the communication customers, however clearly we put it, some customers will interpret it to mean something different. So I'm going to say the word beginning October 1st. We will begin to turn off basic auth for as a number of protocols. That means we will not turn everyone off on October 1st. That would be a pretty awful day to work in Microsoft support if that were the case. Um, we're also not turning off the protocols themselves. Just be super clear on that. Active Sync as a great example keeps coming up. People keep asking, so you're turning off Active Sync? No, we're turning off basic auth for Exchange Active Sync. So those iPhones and Androids will continue to work, but they just can't use basic auth. So we're turning off Pop and IMAP. You may or may not be surprised. There are still a lot of people using Pop and IMAP. Primarily applications, not really client, you know, client day-to-day -day usage for email, but there is still quite a lot of that going on. Then we're turning off um, the protocols that Outlook uses, um, Mappy and RPC, offline address book, and Exchange Web Services. Exchange Web Services, as I'm sure many of you know, is also used by a lot of different applications for all kinds of reasons. So that will be impacted too. Active Sync, I already mentioned, and then Remote PowerShell. So like I said, we're not turning off the protocols, we're turning off basic auth, and all of these protocols already support OAuth, modern auth. Now, Another thing that we announced we were going to do would be we would uh, interrupt basic auth for customers uh, between now and October as we rolled this out. I will tell you that that's primarily focused at the SMB uh, end of the market. SMB and EDU customers, primarily SMB customers, they're not the ones that read the message center. They don't read the blogs. They don't hang on every word I put out on basic auth. So there will be some interruptions of service. There are ways customers can go and opt out of that. Read the documentation. There is a link on here, but there's also notes in the blogs and the message center posts, where if a customer can go in and say, please don't touch basic auth for IMAP. I still need it. Don't mess around. And if we do go and turn it off for 48 hours, as soon as they notice, they can actually go in to the admin center and turn it back on. Within 15 minutes, it'll be back on again. So it's a rolling interruption of service something we haven't really done before. And yes, Paul, you might call it a screen test. Um, we are doing it to quite a few customers at the moment, and I'm hearing a few screams, and that's OK, right? Customers can turn it back on again. After October, though, that's it. OK, so um, the other one I want to really call out as well is SMTP auth, used for sending mail outbound. We have already turned off SMTP auth for customers that don't use it, basic auth. And we've turned it off for millions of tenants. I'll tell you already, we've turned off basic auth for millions of tenants right now who don't use it, but for whom it was enabled. So we're actually protecting customers by turning it off. But SMTP, if it is still in use, we are not going to touch it. Even if we turn it off, you can turn SMTP back on. And the main reason for that is there are a ton of devices and, and you know, hardware devices that really can't be updated to support OAuth flows. So we will allow SMTP auth for the foreseeable future. We have no plans to turn that off. So the question that most customers ask is, how do I know if I'm using basic auth or not? So there's a couple of places I want to point you to. So one is we've been sending a message center post to all the tenants who use basic auth every month since about October last year. It is the mother of all mail merges. Think of it like that. We send a customized per tenant message center post to every tenant using basic auth with a summary of using this much IMAP and this much pop and everything else. I will say it's indicative 
is not precise numbers. It's indicative because if you uh, think about something like Exchange Web Services, it's used by applications, it's used by um, Outlook, for Windows, for Mac. It's, it's a little hard to be precise exactly how many users in any particular time are using you know, specific applications at our level, at an aggregate level. However, if you want the uh, if you want the detail, then Azure AD signing reports is really the place a customer, a partner, who, whomever can go find the detail. So message center posts are about I know there's basic auth usage. Azure AD reports are about who's the user, what's the IP address, what's the machine name, and so on and so forth. That's really where you find the detail. There's a filter in the client app settings in the Azure AD signing reports. You want everything under legacy. If you're a large customer, there is a link as well because the the report there will um, will will not be very easy to download if you're a large customer with a lot of usage, and you might want to use Azure AD workbooks or something like that instead. Stream it to Log Analytics. Now, when you get all of this data, when a customer gets all of this data, then it's like, well, okay, what do I do now? Well, the first thing is get the data exported in JSON format if you are downloading, not CSV, because JSON format will give you all the user agent strings. And user agent strings, while not obviously 100% infallible, are very useful to help customers identify what the usage is and where it's coming from. If I were to write a bad app, I probably wouldn't create a user agent string of my evil app version 1.0. I would probably try and hide it. So user agent strings are not infallible, but for most customers, they're incredibly useful. So here's, I'm going to run through a couple of kind of suggestions for how we typically um, suggest customers go and interpret the data. We'll go protocol by protocol. So let's start with ActiveSync. If you have got a base, bunch of basic auth usage with ActiveSync, what do you do? Well, if you're a large customer, you probably have an MDM. But if you have an MDM solution, you need to use it to change the profile, to change the authentication type. Now, um, Apple's MDM API, for example, does not allow you to modify the auth type of an existing profile. You have to create a new profile, tell it to use OAuth, push it to the device, meaning the device will then have to resync mail. But you can use the MDM. Intune can do it. Um, Workspace One can do it. All of those can do it. So push a new profile using OAuth and not basic auth. If there isn't an MDM, there is something I was hoping to talk about on the call, but it's not quite ready yet. Been working with Apple and Google on some stuff, but we'll hopefully have something public on that fairly soon. But the most practical solution for users is remove the account from the device and add it back. That sounds rather rubbish, I know. Um, the native mail app on an iPhone has supported OAuth for two years or more. Why is it still using basic auth? Because there are a lot. Well, it's using basic auth because the user had their first iPhone more than two years ago. They configured their email. It was using basic auth. They then went to the Apple store or wherever and got themselves a new iPhone. Shiny new iPhone, the first thing it says is, do you want me to transfer your data and settings? You're like, well, that sounds like a good idea. I should do that. And all the pictures of your family and your cats and everything come across and all your settings, which include the authentication type used for the mail app. So it will keep using basic even though it's the newest iPhone. So remove the account, add it back. OK, um, certificate-based auth, I'll call this out, is not basic auth. Certificate-based auth, if you're using that for ActiveSync, will show up under legacy auth in the Azure AD signer reports, but it is not going to be effective when we turn off basic auth. Slightly confusing. We're trying to clarify. I actually have a call today to try and get some of this clarified in, in our documentation. OK, jumping forward, uh, Outlook for Windows. There's a variety of protocols being used. Biggest flag at the top here is this OAuth2 client profile enabled flag. It's a per tenant flag used with uh, get organization config, set organization config. If that flag is set to false, Outlook for Windows cannot do modern auth. It is told not to. It's only Outlook for Windows that's affected by this particular switch. Make sure your a, a tenant has the flag set to true. Outlook for Windows can do modern auth. And then when you look through user agent strings, then there's the, the user agent string will tell you what version of Outlook is in play, by whether it has a 14, 15, or 16 in it. If it's a 14, it's Outlook 2010. And yeah, people are still using Outlook 2010. Okay. And uh, 15 is Outlook 2013. Needs a registry key, though. Can do modern auth. 16 should be doing modern auth. And so if you see 16 in there, somebody's done something. That's it should be doing modern auth and it's not. Either the flag is set in the tenant to be false or they've gone and pushed out some kind of policy. 
people falling asleep to my voice. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. All right, I'll keep plugging on regardless. Sorry if I'm losing your audience, Brian and Betsa. Right, so EWS, this one's a bit tricky. I know there are lots of developers. There's a ton of apps out there still using basic auth. The user agent strings are mostly helpful. Python requests 2.26.0 is not very helpful. Customers are discovering applications that are using basic auth. They need help from, um, they're gonna need help from developers, partners, um, everybody to figure out um, what they're gonna do to um, remediate the app. EWS can do auth. Clearly graph would be a prefer preferential way to go, but uh, this is the time to redevelop your app from EWS to graph, probably a little late. That should be more of a, a strategic goal rather than a tactical goal. I've called out a couple of things in here as well. If you see user agent strings from Surface Hubs and from Teams Rooms, the Teams Rooms devices are using basic auth. There are updates coming from the Teams team, but you can go in the Teams admin center or the admin console and change the device to use modern auth very quickly and easily. Customers need to do that or they are going to get cut off. Pop, IMAP, and PowerShell. Believe it or not, there's still quite a lot there going on. There are no user agent strings in the protocol, so we have no idea what the client app is that's being used. I know there's a lot of applications that are using them. They all, all, all of these uh, protocols support modern auth flows. Client credential flow for Pop and IMAP will be out very, very soon for non-interactive flows, but for client apps and in any kind of app that supports an interactive flow, code is already there. People are going to need help for them. So okay, make sure customers look in the message center. They, then they know if they have a problem or not. Use the Azure AD sign reports to get the detail. Figure out what to do with the users. Communicate to the users. There's a great example of how one of the EDUs has, has taken the data from Azure AD sign reports and they pop it into the user portal. These are the devices you use that are going to get cut off. Keep Make sure that the, uh, the email clients and stuff are up to date. For Pop and IMAP, maybe Outlook on the web. I would rather not use Outlook on the web day to day. I live in Outlook, but many users will put up and, and be very happy with the current versions of OA. And uh, let's try and get secure. So um, my last slide here is there's a bunch of informational links. I'll leave it at that. IT pro stuff at the top, developer focused stuff at the bottom. Any help you can all give to get our customers secure and off basic auth, I will be eternally grateful as will they. Excellent. Thank you so much, Greg. Very useful information, and we hope that everyone does pay attention. Uh, these dates are coming fast, and we would like people to definitely make sure that they're prepared and uh, ready for this once the, uh, the cutoff date hits. Thank you.